Yo, what's good? It's your boy Yankee two times. It's your boy X, man. Yeah, man. Tell me when we read it. Kendra G. She said, a mom of two kids, her next man must make at least 200K. Princess treatment is required. So before we get into this video, make sure y'all like, make sure y'all share, make sure y'all subscribe, man. Let's get into it. Hello, what you doing, girl? I'm cooking. Hey, what you cooking, girl? Breeze, macaroni and cheese. Kyle, what you making? Cornbread, what you cooking? I'm making some lamb chops and some mashed potatoes. Ooh, lamb Ooh, chops and mashed potatoes. Fellas, you already know she can cook. She came on cooking, child. That is so funny. I literally was like, this lady ain't about to pick me. <laughs> we did. What's your name, honey? I'm Kendra. My name is Tasha. Tasha, where you calling me from? Phoenix, Arizona. Phoenix, Arizona. How old are you? I'm 33. 33? What you do for a living? She I'm on the wrong side, yeah. No, I'm sorry. Realtor and a real estate investor. You have any kids? I do. Do I have two boys? My oldest is 12. My youngest is one. You have a one-year-old? Yes. By the same man? Yes. Why y'all not together? Y'all maybe a year ago. Um, 12 years old. So she got a 12 year old, one year old, and they both from the same father. So she, so this is like a 12 year relationship. It's like a lifetime. Mm -hmm. So she 33, 12. She been dating him since she's had the first kid with him since she was 21. So, right, they've been dating their whole adult life. Basically. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. You might as well rock with him. Mm -hmm. I feel like we got together when we were so young. Um, we didn't really know what we wanted in a relationship. We didn't know what it entailed. Um, and so as we got older, we started to grow apart. We were growing, you know, together. So we, it just wasn't working out. Long so when did y'all break up? In 2021. Okay. Um, have you guys ever been married? No. No. Okay. So this is Tasha Phoenix, Arizona, 33, real estate agent and real estate investor. Right, I just got sick of each other. Yeah. What's your zodiac sign? I'm a tourist. I think what I feel like when women say like, "Yo, we was growing apart." I feel like a lot of times what women really mean by that is like, "Yo, I was improving in my life, and he was kind of just doing plateaued at what he was doing." Because she says she's a real estate agent or investor or whatever. So she probably doing that. She probably making mm -hmm. all this money. She probably like, yo, you should get in on this too. And that's not really his thing. So he was like, I'm not really trying to do that. And you know, now you got that little, now that little struggle equation where the woman kind of making all this bread. And she felt like you should be there right too. And you not. And she kind of criticizing you for that. Like, well, you're not trying to improve yourself. You know what I'm saying? Because I feel like women be getting like weird when like they improving themselves. And you not on doing that same shit at the same time? Mm -hmm. They want you to elevate. They like we growing apart. <laughs> the thing is though, I feel like a lot of them when they kind of elevate, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. They either want you to be actually no, elevate. they want you to be above them. Yeah, they want you either elevate with them or be above them. Now, if you not, if I you think know, I think above honestly. Yeah. But I'm saying the minimum is to at least be with them. Yeah. Hey, your birthday? <clears throat> April twentieth. Oh, okay. I'm a Taurus baby too. We are really. We are, I'm a bit May seventh is my birthday. Okay. Um, let's get to it, Tasha. What kind of man you looking for? Um, so I want somebody whole, first and foremost. I want no, no broken man, no way, no tape form. Don't come to me with no broken pockets, broken heart, broken mentality. Well, you said no way they gonna stay firm. I said no way, shape, or form. Oh, no way, shape, or form. Okay, okay. Yeah, come to me home. Like, I want somebody who uh, is stable, um, financially literate, um, who is a I prefer a business owner or entrepreneur because what I do, like, I'm an entrepreneur, um, and I just don't feel like I would be... Correction. She prefers a sex successful entrepreneur. Not just the entrepreneur, you know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure if there's an entrepreneur who's making money, he'd be like, well, I'll be taking losses like every month, so I got to take the second job. Not necessarily what she's talking about, you know what I'm saying? Be good with somebody who is not, simply because I take a lot of risks. Um, I don't want to be 
Um, and I just want my person to understand that Rick is involved with being an entrepreneur. So I prefer somebody who is a business owner, um, God-fearing. Yes, I don't think you understand how crazy that shit said. She's like, because I take a lot of risk. I need somebody who understands that. Women would not want to date an entrepreneur that can't make rent sometimes. Like where he have ups where he could pay rent for like three months in advance. And then he has months where nigga, he need to borrow some money from you. That's not the entrepreneur I think she wants. So like, I feel like some of these women got to be like... That life ain't Realistic. as fancy as people think. Man. Realistic. You know what I'm saying? Like, it sounds good yeah. to be an entrepreneur, but it's actually very difficult. Yeah. It's like, because most niggas that's entrepreneurs be losing money, making money, sometimes up and down. She talking Bro, about... There's some nights you might have to wake up at 2 in the morning, yeah. 3 in the morning to handle some shit that you did not want to handle at mm-hmm. that particular time. Always on the road. Yeah. And then if you have kids, then you got to tend to the kids in 2 or 3 hours. Yeah. Like, because some people be like, a lot of these shows, I want a guy to make six figures. Do you want a guy to make six figures and never home? And you feel like he, like, the way mm-hmm. he talked to you, you think, like, he's a sweet talker, so you might be out here thinking he's cheating when he actually get in business now. You can't deal with that. This might be, i seen an interesting video, right, where it was like this white girl, she was on a podcast or something with these dudes, mm-hmm. and she said that, a red flag for a man between 25 to 30 is if he is available for a date. Mm. Because if he's always available for a date. Mm. Because that kind of signifies to her his job. It's not he important. don't have a lot going on. Mm-hmm. So I'm saying, I thought at first I was just like, that's kind of a weird thing to say. Mm-hmm. But then it kind of, when you think about it, it kind of makes sense. Mm. You know what I mean? Because yeah. it's like, if he's actually by his business he might be traveling to go handle this business to get this deal done mm-hmm. over here in Cali mm-hmm. Florida some, somewhere yeah. you know what I'm saying maybe he up here he got maybe an hour of break time mm-hmm. to talk to anybody but what that girl won't actually say too though is that once they start dating if he's still that busy that's an issue you know what I'm saying I never see you we yeah. never spend time together it's like, he's just like, I understood it when we was dating because we wasn't that serious. But now I never see. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like a weird trade-off, too. It's cool when you're dating. It's not cool when, you, when you're when you in a relationship. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. He has to be God-fearing. And what I mean by God-fearing is like, you know your Bible. Um, you know what you're doing. Mm-hmm. And you're not don't try to use it to manipulate me and get me to do what you want. Like that. <laughs> practice, practice. Granted, we're all but, she but, been through that before. But but God said I can have it my girlfriends as I please. But if you know your Bible, if you know your Bible, when is you use it to your advantage? Like who knows the Bible and then doesn't try to use it to work work for their things in ways that are beneficial. I don't know. That's a good point. I guess. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like I want somebody to know their Bible for what? <laughs> What's the point of knowing something if you can't use it <laughs> to your benefit? It's like I have a law degree, but I don't want you to give make me. <laughs> Far short, because um, I'm not perfect, and I'm not gonna ever make it seem like I'm just a perfect Christian. However, I do try to, you know, do what's right and be right with God. Um, he has to pray. He has to know how to pray. Oh, he has to know how to lead. Jesus. He has to be a good role model because I have two young black boys, so he has to be a good role model. Although their father is in the picture, and he's an amazing father. Um, but if you're gonna be around my kids, you gotta be a good role model. Um, princess treatment is required. It is. Princess treatment is required. You know what I see happening? Exactly what I see happening. She's gonna end up with her with her baby daddy. I think that's what's really gonna happen. Because that's just a lot to just ask for somebody when you got like three kids. You know what I'm saying? I mean, two kids. She said three. You just said three just now. She Unless you misspoke. Well, I think she's probably. Unless you misspoke. So the video says two. So. No, I know the video says two because I heard she said twelve and one, but now she just said three. She said three young oh, boys. I'm pretty sure she just probably oh. missed that spoke. But princess treatment is crazy. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. That's probably that's probably the only thing that her other man wasn't giving her. That's exactly what he wasn't giving Cause her. Cause she's saying he a great dad, he a great this, all this, but he, 
preferential treatment is just not there. Mm-hmm. Cause I feel like I feel like if he cheated or he did something foul, she would have said it. Mm-hmm. She would have said it at this point. Put a detail what princess treatment is to you. Um, being spoiled, I like to be spoiled. Um, I like my, you know, I I, I like to be able to be soft. I like to be able to be within my feminine self. You know, I feel like I'm at peace. I'm single. I'm at peace. So if you take me out of my element and you take me where I have to put back on my grizzly face or um, I have to be this, you know, like something that I'm not, I don't want it. I want to be able to be treated um, a certain way. Um, gifts are required, but I also give gifts as well. Um, Why don't you give a gift, uh, sir? <laughs> okay. So you get a big, uh, uh, a ten day cruise vacation, flowers, and the and the watch. He gets a shaving cream for his birthday. No, nah. <laughs> see, I've, I've never. She gets the shaving cream. See, like I feel like when you know a woman, and a woman's to do like do like the, like I would never go for that. Like I'm always gonna match the gift that you give me. Like oh, this is the, oh my phone. Oh, I've always been the one to match the gift you give me. Yeah. Or let you know that, yo, this is a bullshit gift, bro. Like, this is not great. Like, I mm-hmm. gave you this, you give me this, this is not going to work. This is not equally mm-hmm. equally worth anything. Also, I have a problem with, if you're going into a relationship with somebody, mm-hmm. and they tell it, they telling me princess treatment is required. <laughs> yeah, fuck that. That sounds fucking that. crazy, because the way I kind of view gifts is... It has to come from my heart. It has to come from me wanting to give it to you. Me, mm-hmm. me obviously being able to start is that we start there first. Yeah. Second, me actually wanting to when I want to, not when you want to. Because yeah. if you asking me to gift you shit, that sounds crazy. That that sounds like a sugar mama, sugar daddy. Situation. Yeah. I mean, sugar, sugar daddy situation. Mm-hmm. That's what that sounds like to mm-hmm. me. And I feel like in those situations, some niggas might do that. But they ain't gonna do a long term. They gonna play you out till they get some pum pum. Yeah, they just and gonna fuck you a couple times and they gonna move on to the next bitch. They might give you the best princess treatment. Cause there's a lot of niggas, right? What what I feel like a lot of niggas will not be honest about with women mm-hmm. is that a lot of niggas will take you to the finest restaurant where you want to go. Yeah, 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 What's yeah. it called? What you doing, man? Huh? What you doing, man? So, you giving up the game? Uh, giving up the game. <laughs> I'm giving up the game. Once once we get there, you don't got to give up the game no more. Well, you're uh, not there yet. But what's it called? <laughs> They'll do all of that five-star restaurant. Yeah. Nice trip. Maybe you might take a sporadic trip to Jamaica or something like that, right? Once oh, they just had to be Jamaica, huh? You know, top <laughs> island destination, you know what I'm saying? But what's the call? Second island destination. Nah, we only know, you know, they go out to DR for. But what's the <laughs> But, like, once they do all that. Well, that's why it's number one. Man, what's the call? <laughs> once they do all that, it's kind of like, uh, yo, if once you start giving attitudes, it's like cut off immediately. And now you're going to be like, now you're going to be like, well, I want somebody like the last dude I just dated, but long term, long term, he do that. Not he do that, get what he want, and then stop. It's like, bro, there's a strategy to that. And there's always going to be a strategy to that. You know what I'm saying? I, it's like, a, I guess now they call it love bombing or something. Yeah, like exactly. That. But it's like, they've been doing that from the beginning of the time, mm-hmm. my boy, where it's like, they, they do all the ill shit to you at first. Mm-hmm. And then once they get they get a couple smashes here mm-hmm. and there, you know what I'm saying? Then it's like, mm-hmm. this new joint over here, mm-hmm. and got they, a little better body. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Look a little cuter. And they be like perfect with it because they mm-hmm. know, and they might know you be like in a situation. They might know you just came out of a relationship or something like that. They be like, how you want to take it? And you probably gonna be like, well, I just want to take it slow. You're like, yeah, I'm cool with that too. Because realistically, they don't really want it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. They don't really want to go that deep, but. Hey man, got experience. The princess treatment is crazy. <laughs> okay, now listen. Let's just jump in here. Your princess wanted daddy so bad. Daddy. <laughs> so what do you say? Okay. Daddy might be conscious that you have a one-year-old child. I mean, I don't really have nothing to say to a person who's conscious about that. Like, you know, I, I mean, it is what it is. It's unfortunate that his father and I didn't work out. Um, but I don't feel like my person is worried about that. 
So okay. if there's a person that's worried about that, he's just not my person. Not like, because my baby is my baby. I'm not going to explain. Yo, for sure he's worried about me taking care of her, making sure I have the bills every month, making sure that, you know, I, I could pay stuff on time. That's not my person. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> my person is somebody that understands. Sometimes I'm just not going to have it. <laughs> dumb fucking logic is that? Like, you know what I'm saying? That's the fucking dumbest logic. Oh, my God. All these people on watch so crazy, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not anything between my kid's father and I, but I'm also not going to, um, bro, you gotta, to you, like it is what it is. you got a one year old. I've been dating for 12 years, bro. Did you tell yeah, Bobby too. That nigga's been matting in her for like 12 years, bro. We've been talking about this bad between. <laughs> They, on, they, in, they in a condom between them. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that. No, that. Absolutely. Okay. You get, and why she said, that, she said baby daddy um, gave a princess treatment. Yeah, but unless we got to find out why it ain't working, mm-hmm. he stopped. I just don't think that we were. Um, so, if I'm being honest, so when I got into real estate, we were together and we started doing business together. And I feel like the, our relationship became more about business rather than the personal. Um, and he's like a really business-driven individual. So, like, he wake up thinking about business. He gonna... So, okay. Her person, right? This is what he has to put up with, right? Mm. Not only is baby daddy around a lot, he's around financially. Mm. He gave her two kids, mm. right? So there's probably not going to be her... I'm sorry, her person. There's probably not going to be a day where you don't run into this man. But you ain't, I don't think you peep what she said. What? What part? Bro, she literally said... She felt like the relationship was about business, right? Mm-hmm. Too much. Mm-hmm. Like, you woke up and the relationship was about business. While she's looking for an entrepreneur and a business person that understands that business is hectic. Mm-hmm. And business, bro, that's your fucking man. <laughs> that's your nigga, <laughs> bro. That's your fucking man, <laughs> bro. Is that not your man? She wants him to understand, wants him to be an entrepreneur mm-hmm. or a business person, and wants him to understand that everything, biz- she's business person, whatever. Mm-hmm. So why would you not date the fucking business person? That nigga's already a business person. Are you saying that she didn't like that the businesses was intertwined? With the relationship, because it's like no. I, I gotta hear the rest of this, cause it don't make sense. What the hell that happened between them? About and it stopped being romantic, and it started to be like a, you know, a business partnership. And I didn't like it. I don't think he enjoyed it. And I also think that we just grew apart. Ultimately, I think that you know we did something to try to uh, rekindle the relationship, but I just don't think that you know God pulled us apart. Long story short, God was like, "Time to go," and when God says, "Time to go," time to go. Okay, they said check the Leo chops. Right. <laughs> Matchbox twenty. Well, imagine, I didn't even think of that, but imagine yeah. that a woman saying she want a business person that's busy, and then gonna say, oh, okay. That's the contradiction. Yeah, you said it. Er- yeah, actually, you said it earlier. That's awesome. You was like, she gonna say she wants somebody business minded, right? And then in turn, the man she dated previously, who she had two kids by was too business minded and obviously didn't have enough time romantically mm-hmm. for her. Yeah. So it so then as a man coming into that situation it's like there's a that's a lot going on. Yeah. Obviously baby daddy's not going away. Yeah. Right? Not that you want I mean, if you date a girl a woman with kids, like it'd be easier to I guess deal with a woman that has kids and the and the dad's there because, you know, she has time away from the mm-hmm. kids and can do things with you, right? Yeah. But it, I don't really think she knows what she wants because she, what she seemed like at least they were dating for at least twelve years mm. minimum, right? Yeah. Actually, it has to be thirteen. Long, yeah. It has to be thirteen. 13 14, yeah, yeah 13, thirteen, fourteen, 14 years minimum, right? Mm. On top of that, that's probably the only serious relationship. Um, yeah, she, that she's thirty three. That's the only serious relationship she's probably had, mm-hmm. right? So, at that point. She, I don't, she, it's kind of hard for her to even say what she really want because she is technically still new to dating. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying you can't have, you can't obviously, you obviously can have 
things that you may want mm-hmm. in a relationship that you think you may want in a relationship. Mm-hmm. But until you actually get to know people and talk to people, I don't think you should have that type of expectations. And then on top of that, women are the ones that get approached, right? Mm-hmm. So it's like maybe she needs to start scouting. Well, if she's, that's how she feels, she want a specific type of man. What she's feeling to say about one entrepreneurship entrepreneur person mm-hmm. is that women entrepreneurship when they're dating somebody and men entrepreneurship is very different. If a woman's an entrepreneur and she's dating a man and she expects a man to be a provider, right? She as an entrepreneur entrepreneur is probably not worrying about how she's gonna pay the bills. When you a real life entrepreneur and not like a nigga that's like has a job and then does entrepreneurship on the side. When you're a person that does that, you are worried about how you're going to take care of yourself. So if you're worried about paying this, paying that, paying that, obviously all the time you're not going to be the most romantic nigga because there's a lot of shit that needs to get done. And if you don't get it done, she don't eat. Mm-hmm. Shit gets, her lifestyle gets very hard. If you over there being romantic all the time and she don't eat, you think she gonna be like, oh, you know how I'll hard co- that is? I'll cover the bills this month since you since she was more romantic this month. I'll tell you this, it almost seems like if you're an entrepreneur, you probably shouldn't even be dating for real until unless, you really get to a real. Stable unless you're place. like a successful, that's what I'm saying. Like if you get to a real, she's like, stable, talking, chill, yeah. um, spot. Because what I'm saying is like, bro, you gotta pay, take care of her, take care of the kids, and then be romantic. Hold on, hold on. Because they're not saying no, they no, just, no, there's more, there's more. You gotta be a role model to these kids. Mm-hmm. You gotta be cool. You gotta have a good relationship with them. You gotta have a good relationship with the daddy, baby daddy. Mm-hmm. You have to. Have, you have to be romantic with her. Yeah. You gotta get this. And then you gotta get this money. Who knows if you got kids, mm-hmm. right? Because most likely, what might end up working for her, because she she's not a bad looking female or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. She probably is gonna have to run into somebody that also has kids that could be more understanding of her situation. Yeah. The, just specific to how she's talking and how. What her situation is, mm-hmm. I think. Yeah. So. But it's kind of like, bro, I'm saying it's like, if you got somebody like that, and it's like, because these girls, right? Well, I feel like what most women don't understand is that there's a lot of romantic niggas, right? A lot of romantic guys. But a lot of those romantic guys, their day ends at 5 p.m. where they can enjoy, they enjoy you and being around you and giving you company. Truck drivers and shit, huh? Some of them truck drivers. Nah, no, not truck, not truck drivers. I'm saying like a nigga that get a, go to work like from nine, or something. get off at five. Mm-hmm. I'm not even saying I'm saying like a nigga he can make like probably like ninety thousand, hundred thousand, whatever, right? But they're gonna be if she makes more than him, she's instantly gonna be turned off because she's like, damn, this nigga just he's just content with this lifestyle. Because I feel like a certain girl when she wants she sees certain stuff on Instagram, all this. Her man used to do a lot of shit like that, mm-hmm. and he just cool when he go on vacation. Like her ex man could have like when he go on vacation, he probably take her to like DR Jamaica someplace, right? But her new man, when he go go on vacation, he might just want to cook for her and spend time with her and stuff like mm-hmm. that. She like this nigga don't want to do nothing. Like he okay, he romantic and shit, cooking food. But it's like, I want to go to these places. So it's kind of like a double-edged sword, you know what I'm saying? She's going to have a hard time, man. Yeah. Especially, she still she still got old relationship residue on her a little bit in terms of, like, still processing that break. She, yeah, it may have only been two years. It may have been two years since um, dude. <laughs> Do you think she ain't smashed dude? Yeah. You think they've been around and mm-hmm. done whatever? Mm-hmm. I'm, just, I'm just being realistic because it's like... She still has to deal with the trauma of losing that mm-hmm. relationship. The man who she has two kids with. So exactly. that's a whole other thing too. And now what women fail to realize is that they'll date men mm-hmm. that they don't end up liking. But like, well, it won't end up working out. But they always pick out the qualities that they like and be like, yeah, I want to apply this to this person. I want to apply the qualities from that person to that person. It's like, bro, that's not going to work. You know what I'm saying? You can't have the nigga be... What's it called? Makes make two hundred fifty thousand, and then the other guy be mad caring, and then the other guy be a fighter, be a hood 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 dude when you want him to be. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You can't just take all qualities that you like from 
each person that you say is not perfect and they expect a perfect man to come on. Okay, yeah, you better be. My husband's somewhere eating taco salad, y'all. He's about to, he's going to be so happy when he finds me. Oh, you're going to give him a grandma taco salad. I'm telling you, he's going to be so happy. You're going to love him up. He just got to buy a lamb chop some of that. What's the age range you would say? Oh, God. Um, I would say like 35 to maybe 45. Okay. Do you want more kids? No, I don't. I don't. Um, I prefer that he come with his own. I prefer if he had a if he has a daughter. I want a little girl so bad. So yeah, if I don't, yeah. So have a daughter. And it's funny to me about like when I, we, well, I think even that part. Just to be fair to her, real quick, I think even that part is just like, oh, this would be nice. I don't think it's a requirement though. But even that to be like, y'all don't want to have any more kids, right? Mm-hmm. It's like, bro. Most people that have money are always look trying to create, like create for the next generation mm-hmm. and all that. Where they so, get past their bread too and all that. All yeah. Assets. So saying that you don't want a kid already puts you at a disadvantage because it's kind of like only people that are cool with not having kids are people that's just not financially secure enough mm-hmm. to have kids. Most people that are financially secure don't care about having kids. So to say you like, no, nah, I'm good. Slow, you know, slow red flag. Do you, um, you said you can have kids. Do you want to get married? Absolutely. Okay. Does the guy got to make a certain amount of money? Absolutely. Um, he got to have at least 200000 a year. Yeah. Okay. 200k. so 150 is not even enough for you. Really, too? Um, just because... I don't want anybody, like, if I'm being honest, I don't want anybody who makes, like, less than me. Um, I really feel like when it comes to, like, the woman that I am, granted, I can't speak for nobody else, but I feel like I want to be able to hold my man to a certain caliber. Um, I want to respect him, and I want him to feel like he's the king. Um, I want so to if I make it more him. than him, I don't think that he's going to get what he's looking for from me. So you know, sorry, you said. Well, you know what's crazy. Wow. Well, you know what's crazy about that wow. statement is that that's crazy. It's don't sound like you hear it all the time, so it don't sound. It's not like the she's the first person to ever say it. Mm-hmm. But it's a weird thing to say because it's like she basically said, "If you don't make this amount of money, I don't respect you." Yeah, there's another girl I could show you her too. We gonna, but she kind of her thing kind of rationalized it. But we could probably look at that one after. But what I'm saying is. Um, a girl saying that right yeah. that she gotta make this amount of money right mm-hmm. her her apartment right or where her car house or whatever she's in right a person could probably make that pay for that that whole thing making like a hundred thousand right but she's just saying that because she has that bread and you don't have that bread although you could probably take care of her within a budgetable thing you not respectable. That's all. Well, that's kind of like a crazy. That's like that's like somebody right who don't need like you don't need that money. Mm-hmm. Like he could probably take care of her off his hundred k salary, like rent and the basic necessities and like living. But she's basically saying like if you don't have that extra, I can't respect you because I mm-hmm. got that extra. Mm-hmm. And that don't even make sense. I the thing about it is like. Women will say things like that, but they're not saying it directly like how she said it just mm-hmm. now, right? Yeah. Because she straight up said, "I, you're not." She said, "You're not going to get what you want from me mm-hmm. if you don't make this amount of money, mm-hmm. right?" Which is kind of crazy to say, because this is a show where I think um, it's you say, you know, she interview you, ask you all these personal questions, and apparently people hit you up after, yeah, right? Mm-hmm. So. I tell you this, whoever, if somebody ends up hitting her up, I promise you, you're going to have a hard time with this one. Mm-hmm. Because that's a lot of requirements. So I think her her thing too, though, because you got to think about this, right? 
a lot of these women that do make 100k plus or whatever mm. they don't even want they want you to pay their bills yeah it's like, so that's, that, that's the craziest thing in the world to me because if you want to be this independent woman and you want to um show that you don't need a man why are you requiring him to pay your shit mm-hmm. like how, how does that make sense and, but I think the the, the, the funny you thing I save your bread, right? The funny thing I find about the situation is that I feel like women are more out about it versus men. Well, I feel like they feel like oh, yeah, they, they can just be lying all the time about they, what they, want. they feel like they can say that and it's just be cool, right? Mm-hmm. But let a guy say, yeah, I respect the girls I've dated. Like mm-hmm. I cheated on a woman less when she split the bills. With me. I've cheated mm-hmm. on a woman less when. I felt like she was mm-hmm. actually taking care of the stuff. Mm-hmm. Woman be like, why'd you do that? But, realistically, there's a certain type of respect that you Even get. If you, imagine if you said, I cheated on her because the woman I cheated with cooked me more than she did. Yeah, I'm saying. <laughs> but I'm saying, like, you say you cheat, like, like say you was like, yeah, I never cheated on my shoulder because she got me paying my bills. Uh-huh. Versus, like, a woman, you you felt you didn't feel obligated to, but you felt like if you did, it was not that big a deal because you take care of yourself anyways, right? Mm-hmm. I feel like women would just be ready to kill niggas about that, that statement that they said. Mm-hmm. And basically what she's saying is that depending on how much you get paid is the way I respect you. But men can't say that. Because let's be realistic. Most men that make a lot of money ain't going to have... Ain't gonna treat you like a nigga that needs you. You know what I'm saying? Somebody that needs you ain't gonna treat you like you know what I mean. They also gonna want a woman that doesn't have kids. Mm-hmm. The niggas that are rich, that got really got that bag. They want women that don't got no kids, don't got too many bodies. It's on the younger side of things in mm-hmm. terms of like early twenties. They probably gonna want somebody that is just kind of. Subserving it to them, where in terms of well, let me use a different word. I say like, you know, they gonna, you know, I would say somebody that they can just show the world to, mm-hmm. or they can like that could kind of be like under them a little bit. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, let's go take this trip to Morocco real quick, man. Mm-hmm. You can't do that with somebody that's an entrepreneur woman. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? You can't do that with a working woman. Can't just be like, yo, let's go to um, Turkey Kiko for the weekend real quick. Mm-hmm. Like, nah, he wants you to be up and ready when you say type shit. And another thing about this is like, I feel like a lot of boss women, like boss woman, boss woman, I need me a boss man. It's like, bro, a boss man don't see you as a boss woman if you pay, if he paying all your bills. You know what I'm saying? You might have money like you a boss, but you're not a boss. You know what I'm saying? Really? You're not as equal. That it's like you have, you might have money as a boss, but you're not a boss. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. If I'm taking care of you, I don't see you as a boss. You might see yourself as a boss because you're like, without you, I can still do it. Mm-hmm. But you're choosing not to, so you're choosing to be a scrub. I don't want no skin. Mm-hmm. Okay, what's your sister? Saying, While they was bankrupt. You want to respect him as much if he made less money than you? <laughs> I had to throw that I'm, really not, I'm, I'm not saying that. I'm better. <laughs> Bro, she sound like she just judging. Oh, that's the, the little time. that's the little money you making? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. They was intimidated. They was intimidated, and when it came to financial discussions, they felt like I was coming at them, but I wasn't. When she literally just said, "I don't respect niggas that make less than exactly. me," because like cause oh, what she don't understand, God. right? It's like say, right? She got money, right? I know we gonna sound so bitter to some of these women yeah, in these yeah. comments, man. If you can't afford to just say that. Right? I can't. What's the call? I can't. (laughs) I can't afford it. But what I'm saying is, right? If you think science is reasonable, and somebody else doesn't think that's reasonable, it's not like y'all just got to come to an equal ground. When people got money, they feel like you just being cheap. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's like, right? Say you're like, yo, 
yo, we should go get box seats at the Celtics game, right? It only cost like five hundred dollars a person. Then we find five other people. Me, per se, mm -hmm. I'm like nigga, I don't really give a fuck about no Celtics game. I'd rather pay one hundred and sit in the balcony and just be there for the experience. Now, if we both value the, the game the different ways, mm -hmm. that don't mean I'm cheap. It's just like, bro, I just don't see the value in spending that much money. Just for that shit. Just yeah. for that. Yeah. And I feel like some women, some women and some pe other people, like, they just don't see it like that when they got the money. It's like, you just being cheap, bro. We need it. We might as well get the highest quality shit. See... I don't know why, like, the whole thing you just said earlier, too, was like, oh, if you can't afford it or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. If you a hooker, just say that, bro. No way. That's what that statement sounds like. Every time I hear that statement, that's what that sounds like to me. Like, you just a hooker. Mm -hmm. right. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I always say it's a hooker, but I feel like it's just like a way of just trying to make people feel bad about, feel bad about, about, this about being responsible. It's like, bro, okay. I don't not, see... Not spending money on it. I don't see the value in it. You know what I'm saying? This... Oh, we gotta react to that one video about the burger thing. You seen that? Nah, but what's it called? It's like, yeah, it's like, bro, if I don't see the value in going to this restaurant and you do, mm -hmm. you being like, well, my previous man did this with no problems, you coming at me. You might not think you coming at me, but you coming at me. I've had that happen to me. You coming at me like, yo, my previous relationship had no problem doing this. Me, yeah. we're different. You, there's certain things you like about him, you don't like about me. I remember I was called out about some shit. It was like, oh, my baby daddy used to do this. I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm not doing it, though. Yeah. <laughs> and it kind of like, mm -hmm. oh, okay. The same reason you with you not with your baby daddy might be the same reason. Another reason, there might be another reason why you're not with me. So, you feel me? Child and error. Okay. Did your um, child's father make 200K? He made 100K. Is what it is. hundred K, you can't even do that. No. <laughs> and at that she, point, yo, she laughing like, what the fuck is that? And at that point, it's just kind of like an ego, right? Because mm -hmm. if you got two hundred K, he got a hundred K. You're like basically like top one percent in the United States, which no, you're less than one percent, really. Yeah, two hundred K. I'm saying if y'all, I'm saying combined income, the top one percent in the United States. Oh, okay. Yeah. So what I'm saying is that if you're top one percent in the United States, that means you pretty much have access to anything you really want within limitation. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So for her to laugh at that is just like a monetary amount. Like, okay, he needs to just be there because I just need somebody to make more money than me. Not because it's going to be reflected, but just because I know this nigga makes less money than me. You know what I wonder. I wonder if there's like a, there's a scenario like this right where the guy that can make her happy physically, sexually, emotionally, way better makes a hundred k versus the guy that she sees half the year mm -hmm. who doesn't always do that. He does that sometimes, but he doesn't always do that. If she would date the hundred k versus two hundred k guy, I think she would date him, but. I think so. Hundred K guy probably had to lie about making two hundred. <laughs> I think she would probably do it, yeah. but I think I think I think well with this girl really, I think a lot of things for her is that she's just not mature. Like she might make a lot of money, but she's not mature in a sense where she can stomach knowing telling other people that her man makes less than her, and not feel like she's being judged about it, and not care that she's being judged about it. Mm -hmm. She cares too much about the perception. Of what a nigga making less money than her looks like, although he may may be still able to provide everything that she wants. Mm. Mm. Laugh, a laugh job. Oh, it gets laugh job. No, it's not. It gets laugh. Stop it. It's not that. Like a hundred k is good money. Um, you know, you have to have like I just want somebody who is established. You know, like I said, I'm our, I'm, I kill, I'm coming home. Um, I make good money, um, and I'm not asking for more than what I can give out. Like I, I definitely on a good year make more than 200. Um, so I just feel like, you know, I'm ready to go to that next level. I don't want to be stagnant. I don't want to rebuild with nobody. Uh, I'm sorry. Like I feel like I did that with my kid's father, where we started from the ground and we worked our way up. So I just want my person to come in and meet me where I'm at and we just ride the wave up.
So she worked for her, her, her current, and now they flourishing, but she don't want to go through that building phase again. Although it obviously paid she off. She definitely don't want no younger dudes, though. <laughs> they never answer that question. Need a man. Okay, okay. Well, let's see. Give me both sides of those, boo. Check on the. You want to see the lamb chops? They almost done. Oh, the lamb chops is almost done. I got them. Okay. Oh, I got to put the sauce on them. I don't have my camera, y'all. This is looking dry as hell. It's okay. I'll put the sauce on it. We're going to see this lamb chops. Yeah, I'll put the sauce on it. Yeah, I don't know what happened, but I'll post the picture or something. Okay. All right, all right. Let's hear the comments say, baby mamas, I want a God fearing man. Me. What does the Bible say about having children outside of me? <laughs> man, you got a lot of people in the comments, man. They it says, is... the longer Kendra do this show, the more she realized Kevin was right. <laughs> <laughs> says, At least she do both women and men, though. It's like almost everyone in the show wants a God fearing man and a man that makes at least 100 kids. <laughs> Find you a pastor. Oh man, <laughs> those the motherfuckers that make that paper from your money, from your bag. Somebody said, if you take the most commonly used phrase by every woman who comes on this show, I bet she said literally every phrase. She was not a bad catch, but I can't imagine the two hundred plus K men would think this is a prize. Also, she talks about dating poor men who were intimidated by her money, but her baby daddy was her last relationship. Red flag. Interesting. Yeah, man. Let us know what y'all think in the comments, man. Make sure y'all like. Make sure y'all share. Make sure y'all subscribe, man. We out of here.